a Queen of England was not buried in Westminster Abbey for more than 400 years. Most of the time, royal funerals were big, exciting events, such as the huge and amazing funeral of Elizabeth I, which marked the end of the Tudor era. The funeral for Henry VIII, for, for instance, had to see roads widened so that it could go by. He was then buried in St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. Henry VIII always wanted to be buried in a big tomb, but it would never happen. After he died, his children never finished the tomb. That being said, Henry VIII's great-grandmother would have a horrible afterlife, where her body and ashes would be mistreated after she died. People still remember Catherine of Valois as the Queen of England, even though she wasn't buried in Westminster Abbey for 400 years. But what is the story behind her horrifying treatment? Henry Thyde of England was a brave king who was said to be one of the best to ever lead the country. Catherine of Valois was his queen and wife. At the Battle of Agincourt during the Hundred Years' War, Henry beat the French in a big way. But talks took place to marry the English king to Catherine, a French princess. The plan was to join the thrones of England and France so that the children and heirs of the couple would be kings of both countries. But Catherine's husband, Henry V, got very sick while she was pregnant with their second child. Catherine was only 21 years old at this point, and she was in a different country. She was now a dowager queen and the mother of Henry the King of England and France. Catherine was now a wanted woman, and many aristocrats saw her as a possible wife because they wanted to be in charge of the King of England, who is Catherine's child. That being said, she did date Owen Tudor, who took care of her closet. They eventually got married and had many children. With these ties to the throne, the Tudor line was able to use them in the future. But Catherine of Valois died on February 3rd, 1437, just three days after giving birth. She died from problems after giving birth. She'd been sick for a while and had even gone to Bermondsey Abbey to pray and possibly get help. Catherine, on the other hand, had a big funeral, even though her marriage was scandalous. She was embalmed, and her organs were taken out to keep them from breaking down. Her chest cavity was then filled with spices and plants. After that, Catherine's body was wrapped in a thick, heavy material called sear cloth that had been dipped in wax. After that, her body was wrapped in lead and put in a wooden box. The innards of Catherine were taken out and put in different jars and boxes. They were then buried in different places from the rest of her body. During the funeral procession, a life-size statue of Catherine of Valois was put on top of the coffin. The statue showed the Dowager Queen wearing her best clothes. It was painted to look as real as possible, and Catherine is shown as a tall woman with blue-gray eyes. For many, the wooden figure was the first time they had seen any kind of picture of the queen, who used to be married to Henry I Catherine. On the other hand, had a second burial service on February 8, 1437, five days after she died. She was buried in an alabaster tomb in Westminster Abbey, next to the tomb of her husband, Henry I. And that. This could have been the end of Catherine of Valois' story, but for the next few hundred years, she would have to go through a terrible experience. Henry VI, her son, wanted to build a huge shrine for her, but he died before it could happen, and Henry VI had been removed from power during the Wars of the Roses, so the tomb she was put in was only temporary. Catherine's grandson, Henry VII, on the other hand, planned to tear down the old lady chapel where she was buried and build a new one that would be a beautiful Tudor tomb. During the work, however, Catherine's tomb was destroyed, and her body was found while the new foundations for the church were being dug up. After being buried for 50 to 60 years, Catherine's wooden box was starting to fall apart. The wood had rotted a lot. After the lid of the coffin was opened, her body parts were taken out of it, and even from the lead-lined chamber inside. Then her body was put in a chest made of wood, and lead from the old church roof was used to cover it roughly. Then, this new coffin or box with the remains of the former queen was placed next to her husband's tomb. It would stay there, unburied, for about 300, 400 years. It's possible that Henry VII ordered this to stay away from his family and Catherine's shocking marriage to Owen Tudor. He said, our noble ancestors and blood are buried in our monastery at Westminster, especially the body of our great dame of right noble memory, Queen Catherine, wife of King Henry V. Our body will be buried in the same monastery in the chapel where our great dame lay buried. He may have thought of the Lady Chapel as a place for all the Tudors to be buried together, but Henry VII died before the Lady Chapel could be finished. Neither did his son, the famous six-wived king Henry VIII, nor any of the other Tudors bury their great-grandmother Catherine of Valois. The box she was put in had a lid that was split in two. For a small fee, people could see her body, and tourists who went to Westminster Abbey even pulled back the sear cloth to see her face. People who went to the Abbey said that her bones were strongly joined together, and her flesh was lightly covered with scrapings of tanned leather. They also said that she had bare skin and was buried naked, with only her sear cloth shroud on. It even made some tour guides money, 
and Catherine of Valois was becoming a freaky place for people to visit. People who saw her body would go even further, though. They would crowd into Westminster Abbey to touch and even kiss her body. Samuel Pepys, a famous London writer and diarist, even kissed her dead body. He wrote, On Tuesday, the 28th of November, 1669, I went to the Abbey, and by favor, did see the body of Queen Catherine of Valois. I had the upper part of the body in my hands and did kiss her mouth. I did kiss a queen, now that I think about it. And today is my birthday. I'm 36 years old, and I kissed a queen. As a result, a lot of people went to the Abbey to kiss the queen's body, and this became a custom. Unfortunately, she was also killed in many other horrible ways. In the 18th century, it was said that a group of young students had ripped her body apart. People said the queen's body was a shapeless, white mass that had had a lot taken from it. Her teeth had been taken, and later some of her bones would also be taken. But in 1788, the body parts were put in a vault and left there for about 100 years. Then, during Queen Victoria's reign, her vault was broken into to see if her body was really there. It was, but she was found on top of a pile of coffins, with Catherine of Valois' rotting wooden coffin inside. The people were able to free it from another box, but the wood died when it dropped to the ground. But there was a lot missing from Catherine's body when it was looked at again. Some said it was covered in lime, and some parts of it had broken down. The front part of her head was missing, and a piece of the back of it was found lying on her pelvis. A lot of her backbones, all but one of her ribs, and two of her arm bones were taken. A lot of her body parts were stolen by people looking for souvenirs. Hundreds of years later, her legs were found in perfect condition, still covered in the 12 layers of sear cloth that kept them safe. The box was put back together, and her body was then put inside it. Someone who saw it being taken into Henry the Refere's chapel said, We followed Mr. Poole and the clerk of the works, who had a small lantern with him to light the way out of St. Nicholas's chapel and to the north side of the Chantry Chapel. After him, Mr. George Scarf and I came. There was no one else there, and we seemed to quietly and unconsciously fall into a staged order. I told him, We are going to the Queen's third funeral. As we slowly went around the hall in the dark, no one spoke. Her body was buried in a thick English oak coffin, with a note that described the strange trip her body had been on. Four hundred years after Catherine of Valois died, her body was finally buried in Henry V's chapel apple in a new tomb that was built next to the altar. There was an inscription that said, It is the newest royal tomb in the abbey. Though long overdue, it has been thought that the unique and romantic story of a French princess and an English queen should finally come to an honorable end. Need to speed up. Many horrible things happened to Catherine of Valois's body and remains after she died. People even kissed her rotting remains hundreds of years after she died. It was terrible and some people inside Westminster Abbey even tried to get money from the queen who wasn't buried. But she didn't deserve this. And even though she was a queen, no one respected her after she died. Thanks for watching. If you want to help, please subscribe to Time Tales History. Thanks a lot.